I'm really excited today to share our uh, work in understanding how inconsistent use of complex upper extremity prostheses may contribute to um, back pain in these upper extremity amputees. And I'd like to acknowledge my advisors and co-authors on this work. Uh, the transhumeral limb loss population makes up about 35% of all major upper extremity amputees. Um, and they, similar to the rest of the upper extremity limb loss population, receive upper extremity prosthetic devices at an incredibly high rate, even compared to other populations of limb loss. At the current state, individuals with transhumeral amputations will receive something similar to the setup that we see here on the left side of the screen, which is a conventional socket to go over the soft tissue of the residual limb. That will then be stabilized by some type of body harness that goes around to the contralateral shoulder. And this, can, this body harness is used to both stabilize the device in axial and torsional loading situations, as well as in many cases to help with articulation of the elbow through postural changes. The terminal device is going to vary from patient to patient, and it will be selected based on the patient needs and desires, as well as um, intake from their clinical care team and their prosthetist. And it can be something as sim simple and relatively lightweight as a cosmesis, which is going to just resemble the lost limb, or something as incredibly complex and relatively heavy, such as the Luke arm that many of us here at the University of Utah are familiar with. One of the issues that this population faces um, that really affects their quality of life is the prevalence of back pain in upper extremity amputees. This population experiences chronic back pain at a rate five times higher than the general population. And this is a problem because it directly impacts in a negative way, both their physical quality of life and their ability to complete tasks related to their occupation. Proximity of amputation is directly correlated with the rate of reported chronic pain. So someone with a more proximal amputation, such as a transhumeral amputee, is more likely to re report chronic pain. And then also we know that prosthesis wear time is inversely related with the severity of the back pain. So someone who has inconsistent use or even who has abandoned their device completely is going to typically report worse pain than someone who's able to consistently use their device. This is an extreme problem for the transhumeral amputee population because they have the least uh, success of maintaining use of their prosthetic device. They have the highest rate of abandonment across all major upper extremity amputees, which is 60%. And of those who continue to use their prosthetic device, nearly 60% report having limited use of their prosthetic device, which we classify as less than eight hours on any given day that they elect to use their prosthetic device. So this is not daily use, this is intermittent use. Some of the problems that lead to abandonment are listed here on the left side of the screen with the weight of the device being a primary issue, limited range of motion of the shoulder that affects their ability to move in what feels like a natural way for them. And then also the inability to control the device or something as what seems as simple as just irritation to the skin from the socket materials. Our lab seeks to improve wear time by removing the need for a socket with percutaneous osteointegrated docking systems, which use OI endoprosthetic technologies. We see here our pods on the right side of the screen, and this is a device that replaces the need for a socket and creates a direct skeletal attachment between the prosthetic device and the residual limb. While this removes a lot of the issues that we listed on the previous slide, such as the um, contact dermatitis or even the uh, effects on the range of motion of the shoulder. We still worry about the change in weight between the contract, contralateral intact limb and the prosthetic device, because we know that there is some variability between these two devices, between the device and the intact limb. So our question today is, does the asymmetrical loading from the transhumeral limb loss and prosthesis use cause significant changes in the moments about the trunk that may be contributing to the severe back pain that these individuals are reporting? This is a really tricky question to answer because most subjects that are out there in the world right now are still using their socket devices. And so when we measure this with them, we have those compounding factors of the changes in their kinematics due to limitations on the shoulder range of motion. Additionally, during the pandemic, we've had our research be slowed down, and so our human subjects research doesn't have enough data for us to really analyze at this point. 
So in an approach to mitigate these problems, we decided to simulate these loading parameters in upper extremity amputees using non-amputee motion profiles from a previously collected study, and then to calculate and compare moments about the trunk between these loading parameters. We selected three motion profiles of varying intensity, and this is just to kind of cover the basis of we have some really sedentary uh, amputees that we see, and we have some really young and really active amputees. So we have a self-selected gait, we have a self-selected run, um, and then we have a vertical jump as high as is comfortable to achieve. And again, these were all completed by non-amputee individuals. To these motion profiles, we applied six different models in our visual 3D uh, software, where we have on the far left of the slide, the anatomic arm. And so this is representative of the body segment parameters for the subject that completed these motion profiles. We then simulated a virtual amputation where we removed all mass from the right arm. And then our four prosthetic parameters are replacing the mass of the right arm, right forearm and hand with prosthetic devices of both increasing complexity and increasing mass. And these were based on the uh, masses reported by the distributor and manufacturer of each of these devices. With these models, we can then calculate moments about the trunk in visual 3D. Uh, and the two moments that we'll be speaking about today are lateral flexion, which will always be represented in blue in this presentation, and rotation, which will always be represented in green. And these are both moments with, of the trunk with respect to the pelvis. Um, once these moments are calculated, we also normalize them using subject-specific normalization moments, um, which is the calculated moment divided by the subject height and weight. And this is to account for changes in gender. We compared these moments uh, between each of the loading parameters using repeated measures ANOVA test, and um, the results are as follows. For the least intense motion, which is gait, we see that there's really no instance of significant difference in the loading parameters um, and the moments that they cause in lateral flexion. And we see that same thing happening in gait. And again, we're looking at this in terms of going from left to right, the anatomical arm, the virtual amputation, and then each of the prosthetic devices in increasing complexity and weight. Moving up in intensity of the movement, we see that for moments about the trunk during running and lateral flexion, there is much significant difference and, and many instances of significant difference in these comparisons between each of these loading parameters with the weight of the device indicating more a higher chance of, or the greater the, the difference in the loading parameters, the more likely we are to see that uh, statistically significant difference. And again, we see a very similar um, profile of instances of significant differences in trunk rotation on that running activity. Where we get a little funky is in the jump because the jump has a very unique motion profile compared to uh, gait and running. We see in left lateral flexion that there are significant differences between the virtual amputation and all other loading parameters. Whereas in rotation, we see that difference occurring in right rotation of the body. And this we believe is due to the fact that we're changing the loading parameters asymmetrically. So overall, our results suggest that using a complex prosthesis produces significant differences in trunk moments compared to not wearing a prosthesis in uh, various activities, depending on the intensity of the activity. In the future, as we're moving forward and hopefully seeing subjects again, we will be collecting these motion profiles from transhumeral limb loss subjects, both with and without their prosthetic device. We will also be measuring the changes in kinematics that occur, such as postural sway and also the active range of motion in their shoulder during all of these activities. And then we're really excited to follow these individuals as they Thank my advisors, as well as the Orthopedic Research Laboratory. Oh, Chuck. Yeah. Uh, why do I think they're different? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think about it a lot as if we had a T shaped structure or even an I beam, and you just started putting loads on one side of that I beam. Um, you would imagine there's going to be some changes in the stresses in the body. 
So that's kind of what I think about is occurring here. Um, with that being said, because in the run, we are uh, essentially jumping from foot to foot and we're moving our body a lot in rotation, um, which I can go to that rotation slide as well. But that's sort of where I see this occurring because we're having such um, big inertial moments as we're jumping from foot to foot during a run that having any change in the upper extremity is going to really um, exacerbate those experiences as opposed to a much more um, subtle movement such as walking. Did that address your question or? So I do think that there is a compensation that these individuals, when you see, um, when we interact with our upper extremity amputees, we do see that they have um, compensatory motions. And that's something that we're looking at as well. And that's going to be with the individuals that we collect this data from who are using prosthetic devices that will be manifested in their postural sway, where if they're going to have one shoulder um, maybe held higher than the other. And that's something that we all do actually every day. We have a dominant side. And most of us actually raise our dominant side above our non-dominant yeah. side. And so that's going to be some compensatory motion. Uh, the concern there, of course, would be that as you're creating these compensatory motions, you're loading your body in a different way than uh, you may have initially been loading your body. And that may also cause um, pain in the long run or potentially lead to some instances of arthritis. Thank you.